Before I begin, let me just say, if you haven't seen the Undertale Beta 1.5 video and you are new to the Undertale battle system, I would recommend watching that since I will only be going over what's been added to this complete version. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> this is it. This is a full version of the Undertale battle system. It's finally complete. This will also be the final Undertale video, so to all your Undertale haters, <laughs> today is your day to rejoice. So what's been added? Pretty much everything I couldn't do before. Green or shield mode, pixel collision, death animations, animated attacks, and a special window skin for parallel dialogue. Let's get straight into everything. First is green mode. Set UTB mode to 2 and you'll be good to go. In this mode, the shield will destroy all attacks it makes contact with. You can set it up a custom sound effect and a custom image to use in the parameters. Next is Pixel Collision. You can have an attack use Pixel Collision simply by setting Collision Type to Pixel. This will make it so the player's sprite must have pixel perfect contact with the attack to cause damage. A death animation has been added, making things look a little better when the actor is defeated. You can now also give attacks animated frames. Simply set the attacks image to a sprite sheet that is made up of horizontal frames only. Then set the attacks animation frames to the number of frames in each image. And set the animation speed to the delay in frames you want for each image. Finally, the message system has been changed. You can now use a custom window skin and have the show text to display a similar type of dialogue to the Undertale. To do so, simply do this dot message, then the string within the two like parentheses, within the UTB code note tag as usual, and it will show up during the attack. So that's all for the Undertale battle system stuff, now to move on to the Undertale engine plugins. This includes the Act and Spare system, along with the alt battle scene Undertale, which will be released within the demo project for the Undertale battle system. Since I'll be giving you the project itself, you shouldn't have to worry about all the things because they'll already be set up and ready to go, but I'll still explain everything anyway, so let's get straight into that. So to start, you want to make sure you have all four of these plugins in this specific order. The alt battle screen Undertale, the Undertale Battle System, the Act and Spare System, and then the Escape Upgrade plugin that's right here shown at the bottom. Next, make sure you have the following images set up in your folder. So we'll go to Image, Some Random Dude, UTB, and you're going to need the Command 1, Command 2, Command 3, and Command 4, which are obviously going to be the buttons for the sprites, along with the Heart-Cursor image for the cursor for the actual battles and stuff. It's That's pretty much it for the most part. Next, go into your database, and then go into your skills to set up your Spare and Flee and Act skills. So pretty much in the act skill, set it up like this, make it so it's a scope of one enemy, no skill type, and give the act skill like this. Next, set up your spare skill, same thing, but this time make it all enemies, only battle screen, skill type mercy, input the scarce skill note tag thing right there, and you'll be good to go. Same thing with flee. Once again, make sure you give it a skill type, and the skill type is going to be mercy, your only skill type in the game, and also make sure it has a name of flee, and you can just set up everything else you want to do, and also make sure it has a note tag, escape skill, within its note box, just like this. Now finally, take note of the actual ID of the skill for your act skill like this. Go into your alt battle scene Undertale and set it so your act skill ID is the same as that number for the act skill. So for this example, my act skill was ID number 2 in the skills list thing, so I just put 2 right here. And that means we are good to go and stuff. While you're at it, you can also set up various parameters in the alt battle scene for various stuff. For example, whether you want the animated cursor to be animated, what the colors you want for the enemies front and back colors for like the little thing, if you want the item help to be there, if you want there to be motions or images used for the command things, the scales in which they animate, and the scaling speed, along with all these various offsets you'll need to use if you want to customize it just the way you want it to be. Now if you did set everything up perfectly, you should see something like this when you enter a battle, which is going to be all your things set up and ready to go. Your fight, act, item, and mercy buttons, along with the blank black dialogue box right in the middle. Next thing is, how to make it so dialogue appears, like passively, in that box. To do so, we have to go into the Troops tab. With the Alt Battle Scene Undertale, you can use the plugin command Set Battle Text to set up the text that appears inside of that little battle dialogue box that appears in the middle. So for example, on turn 0, we'll set it so it's going to be The Dark Lord Strikes. Then in tab 2, we can set it so at every turn end, and at turn 1 plus 1 times X, we'll make it so, okay, so if the game, troop, any members are ready to spare, we'll set it so that the Dark Lord doesn't want to fight anymore. Otherwise, we'll set it so the Dark Lord strikes. Now when we actually do a battle test with the Dark Lord, we'll find something that looks like this right here. <laughs> it's showing up now, anytime now. Come on, there we go. So the Dark Lord strikes. But of course, if we make it so that the Dark Lord no longer wants to fight us by hugging the Dark Lord and he does this thing and we go through this entire thing right here, then at the very end it'll say the Dark Lord no longer wants to fight. Just like that. So that's all you have to do to set up and you do your various things. So just do it in this format. Turn 0, set up your initial battle thing. 
turn number tab two, and then at turn end one plus one times X, set up all the conditions that will occur depending on what happens at certain times to make sure the dialogue changes throughout the battle. So yeah, that's simple, that easy. If you do it with the Dark Lord, did it with the Evil Donut, just like the Evil Donut strikes, and then the Evil Donut is no longer evil, or the sprinkles look delicious. Just like that. I would also recommend if you're doing it like an Untail format, be sure to add like a space, star, space. That way you can have it so like it has that star thing at the beginning. But if you don't want to do that, you just set it so it's a normal dialogue, which can just be done by just erasing all this and doing this is a dialogue. <laughs> That's good. That's the correct spelling. Yeah. The next thing to learn about is how to set up all those acting abilities for an enemy. It's very simple. Due to the act and spare system, you do something like this, which is go into the enemy and then go to the note tag and do something called spare choice and then the choice name and then the common event ID. So for example, for the Dark Lord, spare choice check, which is going to be the first choice they have for checking these Dark Lord, is going to be common event one. Next, spare choice hug is going to go to common event two. If you want to change this to something else like, I don't know, grab like that, that will change the name of the actual choice, but it'll still go to common event too. Finally, we have the common event if you just spare the Dark Lord and don't do anything else, but it's not ready to be mercied. If you do that, it'll call common event number three, just like that. So let's actually go to common event one and two and see what happens. So we'll just go right here and we'll see, okay, so check. If we're checking to see if the act enemy ID is number six, it's going to say the Dark Lord stuff. If it's number 11, it's going to be, say, Succubus stuff. And it's number 12, it's going to say Evil Donut stuff. So you may be asking, what are we checking? And we're checking this actual variable, variable number 10, right here. Because the way it works is when you actually act on an enemy and you call upon one of these common events, the enemy's ID is going to be stuck into a specific variable. To customize that variable, you got to go back to your act slash spare system and set the variable ID right here. So for this example, the variable ID is number 10, which means whenever you do an action on an enemy and you call that common event, like I said, that enemy's ID is going to be stored into this variable ID to be used as a reference to change various things that occur throughout that common event. Oh, so yeah, so pretty much you can make so all the enemies have the same check common event. For example, if we go back to our enemies, we'll see that Dark Lord has check for number one. Both see that the Evil Donut also uses common event number one for the check choice. And that's because once you use it, you then check the enemy ID to base it off of what's going to happen and stuff. So yeah, it's that simple. Next are the actual, you know, the actual acting things. So for example, the Dark Lord HUD, hug, <laughs> hug, or as I like to call it, grab, like this, essentially sets it so, it's gonna set it so, game temp set spare, it's gonna do add enemy variable, it's gonna have all this crazy stuff. But what does it mean? Well to start, all of these various things are different commands you can use to customize what happens to the enemy. So let's go over all of them. First of all, game temp dot set spare sets it so this enemy is now available to be spared through this actual action right here. So use this inside the actual action. You want to make it so that will like make the enemy sparable. Next is game temp dot add enemy variable a string and then a number. And this will set it so an enemy variable called whatever in a string for for example blah is added by one. You can also do set enemy variable to set it to a certain value. Now, if you want to check that value, you can do game temp .check enemy variable, the name of the string or like the ID of the variable again, and then equals, 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 and then that number. And you may be asking, well, what's the point of this? Well, say for example, you have multiple actions. So for example, for the donut, let's go back to our actual enemies right here. Let's go to our evil donut and we'll see he has bite and dope bite for common events ID five and six. Say for example, you want to make it so that the player must bite the donut first and then don't bite the donut second in order to spare the evil donut. Here's how you'd make that work. First, go to our bite right here. You do, okay, you're going to do all this. Then we'll do a script call. And this script call is going to set a variable for the donut. So we'll go back to our Dark Lord right here and we'll copy this code right here. So we'll set it so Dark Lord set enemy variable like this. So set enemy variable, call the actual ID of the variable bite like that. And we'll set it to a value of uh, I guess three for no reason whatsoever. So three, there we go. Next, we'll make it so that the Dark Lord Don't Bite has something different going on. We'll do something like, we'll do a check to see if the variable is at a certain position. And if it is on that position or a certain value, then something will happen. So we'll do this right here. So remember the ID was bite, so bite. And we'll see if it's equal to three. So we'll do, let's go right here. We'll do equals 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 three, just like that. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this spare and set it underneath here. Now what's gonna happen is, if the game temp check enemy variable bite is equal to three, which we set up in the bite common event right here, then it'll do this, including spare the enemy. Otherwise, it will do this and not spare the enemy. So we'll say, you have spared. So 
you have spared. On the other hand, on this other one, we'll say you have not spared. So you have not spared, just like that. And that's about it. The final thing to note is the escape upgrade plugin. It's just a small plugin I made. It lets you set a specific formula that's not based on the agility, so you just like remove this. Because you know, in the Undertale system, the player always moves first, which means you want the player's speed to be as high as possible. But if the player's speed is as high as possible, that means you're gonna have a very high escape ratio, because you know, the escape ratio is based off of the player's speed. Of course, using this plugin right here, you just set it so it doesn't rely on that by just saying it to 0.5, we'll make it a 50 50 escape ratio. And then go to set it to whether you want escape rewards or not after fleeing. I'd recommend setting this to true. That way, similar to the Undertale battle system, you could gain rewards after you spare the enemy and the enemy flees from the battle and so you gain like gold and stuff oh yeah oh man okay so that's about it download the blah, 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 blah. download to the undertale battle system plugin in the description of the video alongside this project i have right here which is gonna have all the undertale stuff like I, I, the undertale engine thing going for it yeah you can use it base your stuff off it oh okay well that's all for now so until next time bye Forever.